where we uh, stash our kayaks when we have our mud picnic out here uh, it's usually even shallower obviously how shallow it is uh, is related to the flow in the river because it's a, a river and a lake so um, I think the water this weekend is going to get below four feet. I don't know exactly what it is today. Uh, the river stage in Red Wing, that is. But yeah, when we have our mud picnic in August, this is all still part of the island, even though it's some of it is inundated right now. Um, so we're coming on a little shallow spot here. Hanging out. You can see Riley's back there. Lighthouse Island, uh, beautiful day on the lake, and here I go again. Pretty muddy, sinking in a couple of inches. If you get stuck in your boat, that will help you. At least not lose a propeller. Okay, sometimes when you actually walk more this way, it gets a little firmer, I found. Go and take a look down and just see how shallow it is. Still going here. A little bit of an experiment. Can you see how shallow it is? Yeah, maybe if you see my shadow. Hey there. Still going. It's above my ankles, I'll admit that, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, about shin, shin depth. I'm still going. Let's do a little scan here. Back at Riley. Uh, way back there. Can you see her? I can see her waving, but I don't know if you can. And if you'll notice, the navigation channel is actually just hugs the shoreline over here. So I don't even know if you can see those red buoys. River red right, return right. Uh, so you really have to sh hug the shoreline when you're coming up. You can see how that wouldn't make a big difference if you were coming downstream because it's consistent with where you've been but if you're going upstream and you're in this big basin that looks super deep and it's not and you're at full plane on your boat you can see how if you're not from here your intuition would say hey you might be okay if you just go up the middle but nope, it's very shallow here. Uh, you actually have to go way over there onto uh, the Minnesota shore to find the navigation channel. Kind of wild. Still going. Not above my knees. And I'm not the tallest person. Depth has not changed for a while now. Uh, it's pretty though. Water is cold. Make sure if you're out boating for the fishing opener, you wear a life jacket. Not all of the river is a shallow, thankfully. Not all of Lake Pepin is a shallow, thankfully. Let's see. Still not to my knees. <laughs> we'll have to uh, maybe look at the Google Maps 
when I get done taking this video, just to see where I'm at, I'm not good at guessing how far I've gone. Oh, almost got to my knees. Uh, that bite. <laughs> I'll be able to walk to the next point. So a uh, million metric tons of sediment every year accumulates here at the head of Lake Pepin every year. That's enough sediment to fill a full city block, raise 32 floors, uh, which is about the height of the Fauché Tower in downtown Minneapolis, if you're familiar with it. It was at one point the biggest skyscraper in Minneapolis, of course it's not now. It's still very tall. Okay, I'm... I, eh, nope. Not to my knees yet. Still cruising. Wow. Yeah, so that's turbid water. Uh, if you can see that, so like... You get a... Uh, and that's actually... How we, uh, the Clean Water Act protects our water from sediment and protects it from that turbid chocolate milky water, uh, which can get stirred up in a variety of ways. Uh, but uh, loss of depth isn't necessarily directly regulated. It's interesting, Lake Pepin is in an interesting position where water quality and pollution accumulation are both issues. The loss of habitat, recreational opportunities. Okay. All right, right now, if it was later in the summer, I could go further. Uh, and I'm about at my knees. I'm seeing a bald eagle, not sure if you can. Literally everywhere out here. Beautiful. So, there we are. I don't know, let's see. This is to my knees. Not anymore, I just shallowed up. I just was in the wrong spot. Come back out here a little bit and uh, gives you a few inches. So. Yeah, I could keep going, I think. But, for the sake of all the sake of making our point, it's shallow. Riley's somewhere up there. for, I guess, about eight minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> so, Lake Pep and Legacy Alliance, one of our main campaign is working to address sediment pollution turbidity and uh, the accumulation. Our goal is to create or protect a multi-use lake. There's Bald Eagle. I'm protecting water quality and wildlife and people as people are intricately connected to the, the natural world. Communities depend on the river and Lake Pepin. It's important for recreation. Recreation is important for our health. So it's difficult to dredge out here. Uh, 
Army Corps of Engineers is tasked with keeping the navigation channel open, although the navigation channel here is narrower than it could be. <laughs> and LPLA has initiated a habitat restoration project with the Army Corps of Engineers, Wisconsin DNR, and other partners this way towards Bay City. And that's one way that you can actually dredge out areas of the lake and river that aren't in the navigation channel through these uh, habitat restoration programs. And so we were able to get one going uh, back in Bay City, which has probably been most impacted by sediment. But of course it's working its way downstream. <laughs> Still going here. I don't know if that was a world record. We'll try to set a world record in August at our mud picnic. If you're a member, you'll get an invitation for that. We'll have to see you there. Things are way more fun with more people. Looking forward to the world opening back up and seeing everybody else who loves the lake and river. A lot of people have a lot of in depth knowledge about this stretch of the river, and we feel very grateful to have you included in our work, guiding our work, keeping us posted. Ooh, uh, that was a soft spot. Where are you going? <laughs> I guess I don't have to talk to do it. up here, but it's pretty, uh, pretty wild. That's when I'm coming up here to experience it for yourself. You can see my uh, footprints from when I went out. Kind of like being on the moon. Almost there. I might have to speed this up just to show. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Hey. Ooh, I don't know if we're both in there. I went to my knees. Uh, it looks like it splashed up higher, but I just went to my knees and then I turned back. That's how long it took. We captured it, but at some point you got so far that we couldn't really see you unless we were really zoomed in. Uh, it didn't look like you were up to your knees. Oh, yeah. It was hard to tell. It was mucky. It was muckier than I remember it being last year, so. I did yell at you multiple times to go left and you did not listen to me. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I think I'm supposed to say sorry. Yeah, I probably. did not hear. You want me to do it again? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Hope Guinness you enjoyed. Book of World Record set. <laughs> <laughs> All right.